The Mo Linguist era at Michigan is over, almost four months in. He is headed to Buffalo to be the head coach over there in the MAC. Um, domino effect there from Les Miles stepping down at Kansas. Lance Leopold uh, goes from Buffalo to Kansas, leaving that opening. And uh, kind of some news that snuck up on just about everybody uh, on Friday. Mo Linguist, Michigan's co defensive coordinator and cornerbacks coach, headed to Buffalo. You see that Photoshop there. Uh, I think that was a photo from probably one of his previous stops. He was photoshopped at Michigan. He never, you know, coached a game. Now he's photoshopped in there for uh, Buffalo. Uh, Chris, your reaction yesterday when this went down, your first thought was what? Uh, two things. One, I felt bad for the kids that spent a spring learning from him, and they're learning the terminology. And you know, he's the assistant, the associate co-defensive coordinator, whatever you want to call it. And now they're going to have to be starting over and they've got to be thinking, man, can we catch a break here? I also thought the curse of Les Miles continues, right? <laughs> it's been unbelievable. This guy, you know, uh, bad stuff follows uh, for Michigan, you know, and a lot of people I remember, I don't know if you're old enough to remember when they went through the first coaching search and Les Miles name kept coming up and he wanted yep. that job and didn't get it. And so just weird, man. And then you have to wonder how it's going to affect recruiting. And you're thinking, how can this happen again? Because, you know, it finally feels like you got stability in the program. And then, boom, you lose arguably your best recruiter. I think Sharon Moore would have something to say about that. But uh, this guy had obviously made a splash. It was one of the reasons that they were able to secure Will Johnson's commitment and five-star uh, defensive backs. So it's tough. Uh, and, you know, the perception is, it doesn't matter what's in the contract. It doesn't matter that he left for a head coaching job. People are going to say, well, he left for less money. and But it was in the contract that, hey, if I can get a uh, head coaching job, then I'm out with no buyout. And it's a risk. It's a risk that you take if you're Jim Harbaugh, and it is a risk that he took and he lost. So uh, in my opinion, you go out and hire somebody right away, go to Steve Klinkscale and say, what do you want? We'll give you a co-title, whatever, for the defensive coordinator. He's at Kentucky right now, defensive backs coach, another great recruiter, and minimize the date excuse me, minimize the damage as soon as possible and get that over with. Yeah, I agree with you that the the first thought for me was, man, I was kind of excited just to see what a, at least a full year of Mo Linguist would be. And I think if you're Jim Harbaugh and, you know, whoever drafts up those contracts, it seemed pretty standard where, you know, if you do move up, if you go to a head coaching job or it was a coordinator job outside of the Big Ten yeah. East as well after years one or two, no buyout. And that makes sense to me because, it, you know, all these guys want to be a head coach. All these guys want to coordinate – an entire defense, but you're thinking, man, after a year or two, not, you know, after four months. And I get that is, this was a weird situation. We have to mention that Mo Linguist has ties to Buffalo and coached there for two years in 2012 and 2013. So it's not like this was, um, you know, just a job that, you know, any old job, I guess, for him. And Buffalo's a good Mac job. They just won their division in the Mac right. as well. So you have to point that stuff out. Like you said, he's probably going to make uh, less money. He was making, I think, in the 600 thousands. Uh, Lance Leopold last year was one of the lower paid coaches in the Mac in the 500 thousands. Wouldn't be shocked if they bumped that up or whatever, but, um, right. to get him in this weird timing. But I think timing's the word for me, uh, that makes this kind of such a big blow for Michigan. Uh, you know, you kind of had things rolling, as you mentioned with recruiting, especially defensive backs. It seemed like that was the, uh, that, that was the position group where, man, they're in on a lot of these top guys. You mentioned Will Johnson, obviously the five-star. He's a Michigan legacy, so I think that there's, you know, a chance that he's going to, you know, give the guy next guy a chance, um, you know, but he's going after some guys from the south that I think it's, it's going to be tough now. Um, at the same time, the guys in that building, I mean, when you think of the Vince Grays and Jamon Greens and guys like that, that, you know, really I think had a tough time last year, and then you hear about just how much they're connecting with Mo Linguist. He's got the open door policy for those guys. He's relating more to those players. I just wanted to see that. And what the fruits of that were going to be. And I think that's the most disappointing part. And now you got to go out and hire a guy in May. Yeah, exactly. And, and like I said, you feel bad for the kids. But, you know, who knows what effect one defensive backs coach. You, you know what? Mike Zordich was a great uh, technician and a great teacher of technique at, at corner. And he's not here anymore because he couldn't recruit. It looked like Jim Harbaugh went in a different direction. And he said, OK, because let's be honest, Mo Linguist was kind of a nomad, right? He's been at a lot of different places. Um, but you're trying to think, OK, maybe they can form. They've got the nucleus of a nice young staff here that's going to be together for a while. 
and uh, and you're going to build with it. And uh, and obviously that's not the case anymore. So uh, that's the disappointing part about it. That and now, you know, you, again, you're going to have to get somebody in here who's not going to be able to work with these kids until the beginning of fall camp, because in summer they can't work with them. They're going to have to get to know him. You know, there'll be Zoom calls and, and everything else. And, you know, they'll be able to meet the guy that whoever it is. And again, hopefully it's clink scale, because uh, to me, that's a no brainer. And, uh, you know, he's parlayed a lot of interest into raises. And that's been a hot topic on our board of on the, on the Wolverine.com message board at the fort. People saying, you know, wow, you know, looks like Clink's going to get another raise. And uh, and he's a, you know, he's a hot commodity because he's a great recruiter too, but you need that in this day and age. And I hate to keep bringing up Urban Meyer and what he said, but he said, you can't have a weak link, a weak recruiting link on your staff anymore. You just can't. And uh, Mo Linguist was absolutely an upgrade in that respect. You know, who knows what kind of a DB's coach he would have been. You know, I like that Ron Bellamy's back there. I like having the guys with the culture know that know the Michigan culture back when they were winning championships, probably before you were born now. But uh, uh, I had a couple in there. I was alive for the day too. So, okay. And diapers. (laughs) Yeah. One year's old. All right. Well, as long as you remember it fondly. So, uh, but you know what? Um, it's it's time to get some of that stability because uh, they're going to lose some recruits because of this unless they act quickly. And hopefully Harbaugh's on the phone right now and taking care of business. And I think, you know, immediately we heard yesterday when this we knew this was going to become final and we posted it on the fourth that, OK, he's starting to call the recruits already and saying, look, I'm, I'm working on this and it's going to be OK and we're going to get somebody in here. But, you know, it's tough to convince kids because they hired linguists to kind of smooth things out right after Zordich had been recruiting guys and it worked, but now he's moving on. So do you still have their faith? Uh, I don't know. You mentioned a little bit earlier, and this is kind of the hot topic on the, on the message board that, you know, no matter how this went down, the fact that he is getting a quote unquote promotion up to a head coaching job, people are going to say, Oh, there's another guy that left, you know, this is seven. Mm -hmm. And I know Jim Harbaugh let most of those guys go or or all of Mm -hmm. them this off season. Um, but we've seen it in years past where guys leave, you know, maybe for it seems a lateral job or, you know, they, they get a little bit, bit of a promotion, but a year or two later, then they're back, you know, looking for another job and things like that. And it's all perception at this point when it comes to that. But um, what are your thoughts on this being something that, uh, you know, now people are like, well, this is in disarray and, you know, whatever. I, I think it was more unfortunate timing than anything. Um but at the same time, part of you is like, man, these guys just keep leaving. Uh, you know, maybe you up the ante a little bit for Mo Linguist. Um, it's just tough, you know, when a guy like this wants to become a head coach. Yeah, I love that there's another black head coach in college football, number one. Uh, I think that's been an inequity, and I think it's great for the game. That I'll say that first. Number two, I agree with you. Um, this is not one of those, man, I can't wait to get out of here moments. This is, I'm going to be a head coach. And uh, and really start my you know propel my career. You got to start somewhere. And like you said, you know that's not a it's not a terrible program. You know they've had some success in the recent past. So uh, good for him. You know the one thing that people say though is oh look at Alabama and they lose coaches all the time. And like well they're losing guys that you know after winning national championships and guys that are getting head coaching jobs, you look at Sarkeesian, for example, going to Texas, you know, it's a different problem when you've got Michigan coaches that are either being told to leave, you know, which has happened a lot now under Jim Harbaugh, you would really like the stability of having guys that are here together. I loved the first staff or two, you know, there were guys that left, but you know, Jed fish, I thought was fantastic. And, and I really liked the, the way they worked together and, and you're thinking, man, there's going to be some stability here. He hasn't had stability on a staff. And to me, that's pretty important. Uh, I, and I, again, you can go look at Alabama uh, and, you know, that's a, that's an apples to oranges comparison. So that's the thing to me. It's like it's a different problem when you're running guys off, but it's, it's still a problem. So if you were losing guys with lateral moves that didn't want to be here anymore, and I don't think that's really the case, that's a different problem. So. But more than anything, go identify some guys who really want to be here. And I can tell you, too, right now, Mike Hart and Ron Bellamy, that I don't think are going anywhere. Of course, we said the same thing about Tyrone Wheatley, uh, who was a Michigan running backs coach here and and a running back, and he took off. But uh, you've got to get this stability because it's going to hurt recruiting if you don't. Yep, I'm with you. And I think that's the biggest thing here, Um, to hold on to those guys that are – 
committed now to try to, you know, uh, you know, and a guy like Steve Klingscale as well, he's recruiting a lot of the same guys at Kentucky because he recruits the Midwest right. well. And then obviously you have to recruit the South as well if you're in the SEC. So because, you know, he has those Michigan ties. So it would probably be the perfect fit in a way to come in and replace Mo Linguist because of the way Mo Linguist was doing things more, you know, Southern in terms of, you know, his horizons, I guess you could say in recruiting. So I think that would be a big hire, but we'll, I mean, we'll see what Jim Harbaugh is able to come up with. We've seen him, him make some good hires here. We've seen him kind of when his back's against the wall, kind of come up with a hire. I mean, I thought Mo Linguist was a guy that when his name emerged uh, just before they hired him was surprising, but good. Um, and yeah, Obviously, this happened, so we'll see what he's able to do. I think this guy, this next guy coming in, might make a good deal of money because of the timing of things, and and you got to get someone in. I mean, you don't want to promote another analyst and have him have to do this for a year, and I don't no, think that's going to happen. You can't. But right, you so can't go that route exactly. No, exactly. So, uh, you know, good for whoever's going to come in here, and, and I think that it's a it's a good position to be in when you have some recruits there that if you know them, if you're a clink scale, you can come in and say, all right, stick with me here. Let's get this yes. thing rolling. And I think Jim Harbaugh is great. probably going to have that, you know, near the top of his mind when making this choice yep. as well. Any that's other thoughts? Great, that's a, yeah, it's a great point. I couldn't agree more. Uh, whatever you can do to make it a seamless transition or as seamless as possible. You know what? If you make this hire quickly and it's a great hire and the recruits know the guy and they're on board with it, then that's perfect. And this is, becomes a non-story. So couldn't agree with you more. Let's see what Jim Harbaugh's next step is here. Definitely. All right, there you have it. Remember to go to the Wolverine.com, use the promo code BLUE60. We'll be searching and, uh, you know, covering this coaching search now for the secondary coach, possibly a co-DC. We'll see what route they go with this. But uh, use the promo code BLUE60. That gets you two months of our premium content for free at the Wolverine.com.